So Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour 2024 is going to be a few weeks away. We got some news about it and it's driving everyone crazy. The amount of backlash to this news is something that I haven't seen since back in the superhero days, I guess, when everybody found out that it was going to be CGI. But it's almost like a decision made artificially. It's not something that they absolutely needed to do but this whole gatekeeping thing that they keep doing with dragon ball it just gets really old and really annoying after a while so we finally got the schedule for games battle hour and it looks like we're gonna not only be getting a dragon ball super card game fusion world exhibition match which i did not know that the dbz or dragon ball card game was going like that i didn't know that that scene was popping like that where they're gonna have an entire tournament to be honest i've never played the card game before i used to have cards so i mean good on them they get a little bit of shine here and it's gonna be part of the game's battle hour but for me personally this spot could have easily been filled with say you know uh, I don't know, the Fortnite skins that we got, maybe some more information on future skins or how the collabs actually work when it comes to Fortnite because those are the most popular collabs um, when it comes to Dragon Ball outside of, say, anything that is made by Bandai or any Dragon Ball game developer. So that's kind of where I would have put a little bit more attention to it. But uh, we also get some Dokkan and Legends information for 2024. We have a world championship for the card game, for the Dragon Ball Super card game, uh, the final round. So mainly the news for video games is Legends, Dokkan, and of course, Sparkling Zero. We're going to get more information about that. But the real kicker here is Dragon Ball Daimus getting a little bit of shine at the end. And it makes sense because Akio Yoku himself, the producer, the executive producer of Daima, is going to be there answering questions. And probably, I guarantee, there's going to be like a teaser teaser there. Something small that's going to have a little bit more information about this series that um, there really isn't that much hype for. But at least they get a little bit of something. But here is where the controversy comes, and that is that this is not going to be streamed. We've been receiving many applications to attend this event. Thank you very much for your support. This event will be held offline at the Los Angeles Convention Center. There will be no live streams on the day of the event. Users who already completed their pre-registration for the event are welcome to join us on site. We'll see you there. This is only one of two things, and that's why I feel like this is an artificial thing. It's not something that is like, oh, we can't handle streaming or there's an issue with the streaming. No, I think that either A, they don't have enough people going to this event and it's getting closer to the event and they need to start selling out those tickets. And for anybody who wants to, you know, fly all the way to Los Angeles just to go to this event and pay hundreds of dollars for this ticket, they're welcome to do so. And that's probably why they're not streaming it because they're trying to get ticket sales. So this, this event is fully on board. It's fully funded. And that to me, it, it strikes a bigger problem right now with Dragon Ball when it comes to hype. Now, I'm not saying there's not hype for these video games, but I am saying that the hype generally for Dragon Ball comes from something that's ongoing, like an anime or something. Or for any other series, it's usually an anime. There is not another series out there where the games are pushing the hype and there's no anime series. Um, not that I can think of from the top of my head. So because there's no anime series and there's really no hype for Daima, I guarantee you that's why there's not that many people going to this event. And the next reason is simple. It's probably just artificial hype for the event to try to get people to be like, oh my God, you know, everything's going to be put on their YouTube page afterward. We can look at the YouTube page after the event and everything like that. And so, I mean, that's kind of like artificial hype for that if you really want to think about it but they're both basically the same thing because there's not a lot of people going to the event anyway they need artificial hype to kind of get those numbers going and then people are going to watch the stuff after so this is why people are upset because normally with the the battle hours and other things like comic con stuff like that you can stream the whole thing you can watch the whole thing as it's going so 
basically YouTubers are competing against each other, like who can get videos out fastest and who can stream things and have an actual stream and get that income in from streaming. That's usually and normally what happens. And that's probably where a lot of the kickback coming from because a lot of YouTubers are like, what the hell? Like we're, we're the ones that are, you know, supporting and pushing Dragon Ball, keeping it alive. And now you take away this, you know, valuable source of, you know, uh, I was assuming for a lot of these guys who are only dependent on YouTube, income from streaming. So that's probably a, where a lot of this backlash is coming from. To me personally, I worked that day. So I, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not really going to be able to like give you guys up to date information. So I'll probably watch it afterward and see what happened. Anything, anything new I'll tweet or I'll put it on the community tab, things like that. But uh, besides that, I'm really just excited for Dragon Ball Sparkling, which actually brings me to my next point because everybody has been, they've been messaging me this. This is like the official Dragon Ball Sparkling roster, and this is not real. This was created by a Twitter user named Aeon Penenko, and they created a roster of what they believe would be going into Dragon Ball's Dragon Ball Sparkling without having anything else added to it. These are the this is gonna be the roster now some of these guys are gonna have alternate skins or whatever is what they're saying But there's different eras of Dragon Ball here and we can see that Dragon Ball itself is one of the smallest Next to Dragon Ball GT those two eras are on top and I think for Dragon Ball we have a pretty good sized Roster I think like for Dragon Ball though. We are missing Yamcha and we are missing Tien those are the two that I would probably add on there. And uh, I mean, I'm glad that Demon King Piccolo and Piccolo are two different things in this. That's obviously a dub. And um, yeah, I think that besides Tien and Yamcha not being in this roster is a pretty solid roster. And we have some movies up here. Actually, this one up here is not even like just Dragon Ball GT. There's some of the movies. We have Gogeta, we have Janemba, Taipan, and Heredragon. Um, those are all solid and then we have the GT characters which the two shadow dragons Obviously, you're gonna need you're also gonna need Omega. I like this guy right here from the early GT episodes That's also a, um, a good pick and uh, I mean yeah, you got a pretty good solid roster here now for Dragon Ball Z It's obviously gonna be a lot more because Dragon Ball Z had a lot more going into it and for Dragon Ball Z you have I mean basically the characters that you would need obviously some of these guys are going to have different transformations and whatnot um i did notice that semi-perfect cell does not seem to be here but I, it is possibility that i mean i don't see perfect cell either so actually it looks like this is like them going to be transforming into those, those transformations so not a separate character which makes sense i like that actually and um i mean i see everybody that kind of everybody that i want to see in here even Bardock you see in here, that's that's pretty good. For some reason, Fasha's in here. I don't know. I don't know if I would have added her. But um, Cooler and um, Metacooler. Metacooler's always been my favorite um, in Dragon Ball, in the Dragon Ball games. I always love Metacooler. But for Dragon Ball Super, this is kind of where the um, controversy really is going to be. Like, this is where most people are going to have a lot more to say because we haven't really seen a full game that has really taken advantage of the Super characters um, as opposed to just relying on Dragon Ball Z characters yet. So we have Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, Mai for some reason. I don't know why she's in here. But um, you have Gohan, Piccolo. Like the main, mains up here, 100%. You know, Goten, Trunks. I would like to see Goten and Trunks in their superhero outfits. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, homage to the manga. Obviously Bro Broly. Broly's friends are in here. I mean, Chi-Li I can see. The other one, I don't know. I don't know why he's in here either. Um, I would have added them in here. The Gammas, obviously. Um, you have Kaba, Kale Khalifla, Hit, the two Namekians, Beerus, Champa. I feel like you need more Gods of Destruction. We saw more Gods of Destruction in action in the actual shows. So I feel like those would be great. All Goku Black variants, Goku Black, Samazu, and, uh, you know, Merge Zamazu, those are good as well. Some of these we already saw, like the um, Bergamo, we saw him already in the trailer, so he's going to be in there. Topo, Dispo, I'm, I completely blanked on Dispo. I like the fact that Dispo's in here. Uh, Ribrian, oh my god. Remember when the entire internet hated this character? Like, I mean, I feel like we just collectively forgot about her, but I do like that 
Kine is also in here. So is Bardock. Bardock's also in here. And um, Bardock versus, like, like can you imagine Z Bardock versus the uh, minus Bardock? That'd be pretty cool. And I do like the inclusion of two Daima characters because that will give us some hype for the movie. So you have Goku and Vegeta. They better have different abilities and techniques and stuff like that. Then, well, at least Goku better because Goku, there's already two other kid Goku variants here. So... Vegeta is going to be like, that's the only Vegeta, small kid Vegeta variant that we have. This is a solid roster, actually, now that I'm looking at it. There's some that I wouldn't have added. There's some that I would. Not that many, though, to be honest with you. I feel like everyone's going to have the characters that they really want to see in this. But as a first game, like, say, like, there's three of them and they got to add more. This is a solid roster for me to play with other people online or for me to play with friends and, and not get bored. Like, this is a solid roster. I don't even care if I have to unlock a lot of these guys. Like, I would still, like, this would be solid for me. I would definitely be playing this, and I would definitely unlock all these characters, 100, 110%. And it actually, in the description right here, it says uh, that TN has the DBS version, but also alternate versions from DBZ and Z. The same goes for Z, Yamcha having alternate super costumes. So, um, I guess TN and Yamcha specifically are going to have basically be the same character just with different skins for either the prequel version and that makes sense because they basically are the same characters throughout i would imagine and roshi who we see in super is probably going to be a little bit different or have a, at least a different skin for z and for maybe jackie chun or no we actually we do have a different roshi up here anyway so yeah this is a fan-made list so stop telling me this is not a fan-made list but um yeah, this is awesome. This is an awesome list. I think this is solid, and I would love to play. I would love for the game to have this many characters in it. Of course, for me, manga characters like Moro would be great to add in here, but other than that, this is still a great list, and I absolutely love it. Subscribe for more content.